Good morning, Grade Sixes, and welcome to your mathematics lesson today, brought to you by Worksheet Cloud. I hope you guys are all well and looking forward to the week ahead, and I hope you guys are ready to crack on with some mathematics for today. Um, there's our, our structure for today. So today we're going to be looking at area. Uh, last lesson was perimeter, um, so it's just natural that we move on to area. And then you've got your warm-ups, uh, mental questions, uh, brain challenges, etc. on either side of that. So let's get into it. I've actually moved you on to what I think is a more difficult level of these puzzles. Um, and it'll be interesting to see if you guys can handle these. My clue I'm going to give you is to remember order of operations. So which so which operation do you do first plus minus divide or multiply um, okay there's no division there but you'll see that there's a mixture of multiply and add so yeah which one do you do first so off you go and let's see how you get on uh, to start here i would have looked at the second line and noticed that eight is equal to four plus four so quite a cool easy start uh, i would have then gone to the second last line and I know that 5 minus 4 is equal to 1. Okay. So then I would have filled in what I know for the symbols in the top line. And the teddy bear is 9. Then I know that 9 is equal to 3 multiplied by 3. And then I can have 9 plus 3 multiplied by 5. And here's where your order of operations becomes really important because you should be doing multiply first. So 3 times 5 is 15. Add the 9 and we get an answer of 24. Okay. So, um, yeah, I hope you guys recognized all those steps uh, and we're, we're able to, to complete the puzzle and get the correct answer. Okay, your uh, mental maths questions for today. And let me make the screen a bit bigger for you. Um, okay, so quite a bit to read through there. So, as always, it's not a rush. There's no prize for anyone who uh, ends first. Please check your work. Please read the question very carefully. Make sure you understand what I'm asking you. It's a great idea to read the question more than once. Um, and then, yeah, work through them. Take your time. Press play and see how you got on. Question one, number one is quite a cool way to ask you guys uh, questions about principles of numbers and different types of numbers. So you get given a list of numbers and then they'll ask you to identify uh, various types of number. So for 1a, they've asked you the sum of 2 and 9. So there, uh, the whole idea is, do you understand what the word sum is? And sum is the answer given to, sorry, sum is the name given to the answer of an addition sum. So your sum of 2 and 9 is 11, okay, which you can identify from the list above. A square number, we know that a square number is the answer you get when you multiply a number by itself. And there are a couple there. So 16 is a square number because 4 times 4 equals 16. And 25 is also a square number because 5 times 5 is equal to 25. Remember, a prime number for C has only got two factors, itself and the number 1. And if you have to write out all the factors of the numbers in the list, you'll notice that 11 is the only number that has two factors. So 11 can be divided by 1 and itself. All the other numbers there have more than two factors. And then a cube number is a number that you get when you multiply something by itself three times. And your cube number there is going to be 27 because 27 equals 3 times 3 times 3. And to cube a number means to multiply it by itself three times. Okay. Uh, then question number two uh, has got to do with measurement. Okay. And we'll just move that to the top. So there you've got uh, a list of measurements. These measurements are all capacity or volume. So how much can you put into a particular object? Um, so liters and milliliters. 
And the things you should be saying to yourself is how many milliliters in a liter? How do I get from liters to milliliters or milliliters to liters? Uh, and yes, there are a thousand milliliters in a liter and we've already done um, a lesson on measurements. So I'd encourage you to go back onto worksheetcloud.com, have a look at the past lessons and online activities to brush up on that concept if you've forgotten. Um, so the first thing I would do is I would convert uh, everything to the same units and 0 0,2 liters is 200 milliliters. So 0, 0,2 multiplied by 1000 is 200 and 0, 0,12 multiplied by 1000 is 120. Now all my measurements are in milliliters. So question A asks me, write 0, 0,201 liters in milliliters. And there your answer is the second number. Okay, so there 0, 0,201 multiplied by 1000 is 201. Okay, and then they ask you to arrange them in um, ascending order, so smallest to biggest. And because we've already converted them in the beginning, we can see that the order will be 102 for the smallest, then 120, then 200, and lastly, 201 milliliters. Okay, um, question three. Uh, can you make inferences and what that means is can you have a look at the question that you've been given 23 multiplied by 19 equals 437 and can you use that information uh, to solve problems like an A or an B without actually doing the calculation so we know that 23 multiplied by 19 is 437 so if we had to go in the opposite direction then 437 divided by 19 is going to equal 23. So that's an inference. Um, so you've been able to deduce 437 divided by 19 equals 23 based on the sum 23 multiplied by 19 equals 437. And then for B, if I know that 23 multiplied by 19 is 437, then 24 multiplied by 19 must mean that I add um, 19 to 437. Okay, and that's going to give me 456. Okay, so that's uh, making inferences and looking at questions to see if I can answer other questions that follow. Okay, and then for uh, question four, Jordan has 527 toy cars in his collection. Brian has 79 fewer cars than Jordan. Simon has half as many cars as Brian. How many cars does each boy have? Okay, so that's quite a mouthful, um, you know, if you look at it in one, in one go. So I would encourage you to break it up and to chunk it. All right. Um, so... First, Jordan has 527. Okay, so that's fine. We know how many he has. Right, then we go look at Brian, and Brian has 79 fewer. Okay, so when we sub subtract 79, we get 448. Okay, so that's how much Brian has. Okay, so now we've done Brian, and then Simon has half the number of Brian, so Simon must equal 448 divided by 2, and that gives me 224, and that's Simon's amount, and there we have the amounts of each boy. So, yeah, just take it step by step, uh, and then it will make it a lot easier for you. Okay, question 5 is regarding the triangle at the bottom of the screen, okay, and the triangle says... Um, question says ABC is an isosceles triangle and remember isosceles triangle is identified by those two stripes in the lines and those two stripes mean that side AB is equal to side AC so isosceles triangle two sides are equal which means the two base angles are equal okay I also know that the angles on a straight line add up to 180 okay so there's my straight line angle 
So therefore 180 minus 104 is 76 degrees. And if that angle is 76, then that must be 76 degrees because the base angles in an isosceles triangle are equal. And if I add 76 and 76 together, I get 152. So my angle X must be 180 minus 152. And that answer is 28 degrees. Okay. And then if you want to check that, add 76, 76 and 28 and see if you get 180 and then you'll be correct. And then just remember the rule that this external angle, 104, is equal to the opposite two interior angles added together. So this is another type of check. So if I add 76 and 28, I get 104. And then that's another reason for me knowing that I am correct. Okay. Right. And then I uh, snuck in a question six for you just to kind of keep you on your toes. Uh, and it's Monday after all, so we can afford to do a little bit extra. Okay. So that's a uh, long division question. And that's 819 divided by 52. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to write 819, and this is maybe uh, a method that some of you want to try out. And I'm going to say 10 multiplied by 52 is equal to 520. I'm then going to subtract. And I'm left with 299. Uh, I'm then going to say 5 multiplied by 52 is half of 520 which is 260. I'm going to subtract that and get 39. Now I can see that um, I don't have another group of 52. So I take the 10 times 52, I add it to the 5 times 52. So therefore my answer is 15 remainder 39. Okay. So there another type of uh, strategy where you can work out a long division sum um, using multiplication and subtraction. Okay, I hope you guys remembered those principles. Uh, they've all been done in previous lessons. So feel free to go have a look at those lessons again and the online activities to brush up um, on that information and those concepts that have been taught. Okay, so uh, we're just going to get into the main theme of today, which is area. Um, let's go have a look at what that's all about. Okay, guys, so um, we go on to area. And the first thing I just want to recap is something we did uh, in the previous lesson, and that's perimeter. So perimeter, as you will remember, is the distance around the outside of a shape, uh, as indicated by the red lines that have just gone around the rectangle. These are the units of distance that we use to measure in. Um, and we in South Africa predominantly use the metric system. So millimeters, centimeters, meters, and kilometers. So it is worthwhile for you to remember how to convert between those. And the imperial units are uh, measurements that you can still know about. And they are still handy to know about. And I always tell my students that I teach rather know about them than don't know about them. And again, we've covered uh, conversions of imperial and metric units in previous lessons. So please go back and have a look at those if you've forgotten. Uh, the area of a shape is a measure of the surface or space contained within its perimeter. So we know the perimeter is um, the outline in red. So that green section that's just appeared would be your area. Okay. Now, area is measured in units squared, so millimeter squared, centimeter squared, meter squared, kilometer squared, etc. Um, and that's because we're multiplying two sides together. So um, those are your units of area. Okay, so that little two above the millimeter, centimeter, meter, kilometer, um, that indicates square. Okay, so that indica indicates millimeter square, centimeter square, meter square, and kilometer square. 
So one centimeter squared is what I've got on the screen at the moment. It's, it, it is literally a square with uh, each side equally one centimeter. And that's how we get one centimeter square. Okay, so it's a square made up of sides, one centimeter length. The same for meters and kilometers. So one meter squared is a square where each side is one meter long. A kilometer squared is a square with each side one kilometer long. All right, so um, that's just a little explanation of where we get um, centimeters squared from. Okay, and there you can see that's one centimeter squared, another one, another one, okay? And we can break up each shape uh, into its uh, one centimeter squared components, and we can add them all together, okay? Uh, and that will give us 18 centimeters squared. Uh, that's quite a long way of doing things, okay? Uh, alternatively, we can just measure the length of one side, and as you can see, that's six centimeters. We can measure the length of the other side, which is three centimeters. And if you've already uh, noticed it, then well done. We know that six times three is 18. So the area of that rectangle is 18 centimeters squared. So in previous years, grade four, five, and before you, you might have uh, split up a shape into one centimeter square components and counted the squares. And now you can use the formula of length times width or length times breadth for a rectangle. Uh, and that's gonna give you a lot uh, quicker and easier method of figuring out the area. It's really important that you notice the um, exponent two after the centimeter sign. Uh, and that gives us an indication that you've measured the area correctly. Okay, so there are three examples for you to try. Uh, press pause and come back and see how you've got on. Two meter width, four meter length. If we had to split that up into its individual one meter square components, you can count that there are going to be eight. Okay, so there are two rows of four or four columns of two, so therefore we know that two times four is eight meters squared. For the second one, again, we can divide it up into its individual meter square components. We know there are three rows of five or five columns of three, so three times five or five times three, the order of a multiplication sum doesn't matter, and you get 15 meters squared. Again, notice that the unit of measurement as the exponent two after it. And then the last one, you're quite correct in going four multiplied by seven or seven multiplied by four is going to give me 28 meters squared. Okay, so there's just a little recap uh, and conclusion that to find the area of a rectangle, simply multiply the two dimensions together. So length times width, or width times length, and some people also say length times breadth, or breadth times length. Okay, so here's some more practice for you. Um, if you go and give those three uh, rectangles uh, a try and work out their area, remember the unit of measurement, and remember the squared sign at the end. Off you go. 40 centimeters is 40 centimeters squared. Okay, good, well done. Okay, now I've left you with these to practice. Um, there are five of them, They're very similar to the perimeter problems that I gave you, but now you're having to work out the area. Um, so go and do these five as a last bit of practice, and then let's see how you get on. You're quite correct, 100 times 50 is 5,000 meters squared. The basketball courts, 90 times 50 is 4,500. The uh, what is it, a rugby field or a football field is 4,800, so 40 times 120. The playing card, you're dealing with halves, um, so 8.5 times 5.5 is 46,75 centimeters squared. And then the pool table is 90 times 210, which is 8,900 centimeters squared. Okay, so that's area of rectangles, length times width or length times breadth. Make sure that both the length and the width are in the same unit of measurement. 
Okay, so we don't want to have things like 100 meters times 10 centimeters. You need to have either both meters or both centimeters as we've done in this lesson. So just keep an eye out for that. But that's predominantly uh, comes in at grade seven. But it's very useful to know. Right, then we will move on to area of compound shapes. Uh, and it's uh, the same shape that I gave you in your perimeter problem where you needed to work out the length of the missing sides. Okay, here we don't have to work out any lengths of any missing sides because we've got the length and the width of both uh, squares that make the whole shape. So all you need to do here is you need to separate this shape into two different shapes. And here we can separate uh, the big square. And we know the big square is 4 times 4 is 16 meters squared. Then the smaller square will be 3 times 3, which is 9 meters squared. And then yes, you're quite correct. We add those two together. So the area of that whole shape is 25 meters squared. Okay, and there's another compound shape for you to work out. So compound just means a shape made up of more shapes. Okay, so there we can see that that shape can be divided up into three different shapes. I'm going to give you an opportunity to go work that out by yourself um, and then press play to see how you get on. Right guys, so let's have a look at how we can work this out and there are two different ways to work this out. Um, so as I mentioned, you can split the compound shape into uh, a number of, of separate shapes, work out the areas of those separate shapes and then add them together. So here um, they've worked out that that side length at the bottom is two centimeters uh, based on the information given. Um, so you can see that that rectangle is going to be 24 centimeters squared because 12 times 2 is 24. Then they're going to go work out the top rectangle, which is 2 times 4, which is 8 centimeters squared. Notice it's not 2 times 6 because the two centimeters of that top rectangle has been cut off by the blue line. Um, and the same size for the bottom rectangle, eight centimeters squared. And as we mentioned, we would just add those amounts together to get 40 centimeters squared. So now what happens if you had perhaps done it a different way, which is no problem at all. We'll go through that. So perhaps you would have split the compound shape into that top rectangle, the bottom rectangle, and then the vertical rectangle in the middle. Now you would just need to work out that that side is two centimeters, and you can do that based on the information given. Then you would work out that middle rectangle to be 16 centimeters squared, the top to be six times two, 12 centimeters squared, and the bottom would also be six times two, which is 12 centimeters squared. And as we agreed, we would add them together and you can see that you get the same answer. Okay, so as long as you're working out those individual components correctly, and you've worked out the lengths of those rectangles and their sides, um, then everything should be good. Okay, let's look at another area of a compound shape. Okay, so here you're going to have to work out uh, the lengths of sides. You're going to have to work out how you're going to cut that compound shape up into various uh, rectangles, uh, work out their areas, and then add them together. I'll give you a moment to work it out. Press play and see how you guys get on. The thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw in that horizontal line. So therefore, I've got that top rectangle. Uh, which I think I'll be able to work out. I'm then going to draw that vertical line to work out that rectangle. And then you can see I've got uh, what's something that looks like a bit of a square in the middle. So I need to work out the length of that uh, question mark. And if you have a look at the top length is eight. Uh, and then you need to subtract um, two, two meters of either side. So that's going to give you four meters. Okay. So it's not exactly a square in the middle. It's also a rectangle. Just notice the sign that says not drawn to scale. So even if it looks like a square, you can't take it that it's a square. You've got to look at the measurements, uh, and, and the measurements tell you whether it's a square or a rectangle. Regardless, we work out the area of squares and rectangles the same by multiplying the two side lengths together. 
Um, so now what I need to do is work out that length of that rectangle on the right hand side and I work out that length based on what, what I have on the left hand side and that's going to give me three meters. Okay. Uh, and now I'll just go work out the individual areas. Okay, so 8 times 2 is 16. 5 times 4 is 20. And 3 times 2 is 6. Then I need to add them together and I get an area of 42 meters squared. Now perhaps you split up that compound shape uh, a different way. Uh, it shouldn't really matter. In fact, it doesn't matter as long as your answer adds up to 42 meters squared then you know that the way you've split up that compound shape is accurate and 100% correct. Right, great sixes, that's your area for today. As I say, I'm going to throw in a few of those moving forward to see if you remember A, how to um, work out perimeter, how to work out area of compound shapes. Do we use the same units of measurements? How do we split up? Uh, compound shapes and work out their individual areas and then add them up all together. So we'll keep practicing those moving forward over the next few lessons. Here's your challenger for today. It's the game of 24 and uh, you guys are already on to the next level. Um, so you'll see the two dots and it's a different color which means it gets starts getting a little bit more difficult. So can you work out uh, 24 on each card using plus minus times divide? Um, and how many different ways can you can you work out 24 on each card? Cool grade sixes, thanks for joining me today uh, for your math lesson on worksheetcloud.com. A reminder of the online activities that are there for you to use with the memo. Please go practice these concepts. Make sure you understand them. Have a really cool day and good luck for the week ahead. All the best.